Raising your testosterone naturally is no feat, but your doctor hands you a script of Clomid, and then you start to feel foggy. Emotionally, you're starting to feel some flatness, maybe some anxiety, irritability. Your labs come back and they're looking good, but you're feeling worse. Now, what's going on? So let's break down the real difference between Clomid and Enclomethine, and why choosing the wrong one can wreck your progress, your mood, and your libido. Currently, I've been working with men who have been handed Clomid and have no contacts, no labs, and no exit strategy. So in this video, this is something I wish they seen before they started. So let's break it down clearly so you know exactly what you're working with. The first point is what is Clomid and what is Enclomethine? Clomid is the brand name for Clomiphene citrate. It's a drug that's originally used for women to stimulate ovulation. But here's what most people do not know. It's not a single compound. It's a 50-50 mix of two isomers. You have enclomiphene and zooclomiphene. So essentially you want to think of like left hand versus right hand. Enclomiphene is the one that we want. It stimulates LH and SSH, which promotes testosterone production and sperm development. But zooclomiphene, it's longer acting and behaves more like an estrogen agonist, especially in the brain. It lingers in your system longer and you can lead to mood swings, irritability, low libido, and brain fog. So when you take Clomid, you're getting both. And Clomiphene might be pushing your testosterone up, but Zooclomiphene might be dragging it down. That's why some men say, my testosterone looks great, but I feel terrible. And Clomiphene by itself is much cleaner. It's shorter acting and more targeted. It increases communication in the brain, which receives an increase in LH and FSH, supporting endogenous testosterone production without the competing actions of Zooclomiphene. While enclomiphene does have some estrogenic side effects in certain individuals, this tends to be dose dependent and more manageable, especially when guided appropriately. This separation allows for a more precision titration, so you get better mood, libido support, reduced neurological side effects, and in practice, enclomiphene gives you the benefits of stimulation without so much of the negative side effects of the other isomer. So when you go on testosterone therapy, their brain shuts down the LH and FSH production. So essentially, the brain signals that it has enough testosterone, so it shuts off the brain to the testy communication. Clomid, or more specifically, enclomiphene, can restart that system. It increases the brain's communication, which in turn stimulates LH and FSH, leading to stimulation of the testes, and therefore increasing endogenous testosterone production. But if you're using Clomid, you're still getting zooclomiphene's estrogenic side effects, especially in the limbic system and hypothalamus. So that's what leads to inconsistent mood, unstable libido, and often a disconnected feeling. Think of enclomiphene like a focused technician. It gets in, gets the job in, and then gets out. Zooclomiphene, that's the guy who shows up late, tracks mud into your house, hangs around, messes with stuff he didn't ask for. This distinction is so important, especially when you're trying to optimize not just the testosterone numbers, but your quality of life. I'll give you an example. I had a 28-year-old patient who came to me after six months of Clomid. His testosterone levels had improved from 350 to over 800, but his libido was gone, his mood was erratic, and with some symptoms of agitation, anger, sometimes you'll go to sadness, and anxiety, and depression, and his wife has started to worry about him as he was not being himself. So then we ran a full panel. His estradiol was elevated, sex hormone bonding globulin was high, his free testosterone looked okay, but he still felt awful. So then we moved him to 12.5 milligrams of enclomiphene every day. And then we added boron and magnesium glycinate every night that will help the free testosterone by lowering sex hormone bonding globulin. And when within four weeks, we will test. So we checked in again and his total T hit 950. Free testosterone doubled, estradiol normalized, and most importantly, he felt like himself again. While that might sound like a straightforward fix, it's much more complex beneath the surface. Hormone balancing isn't just about numbers. It's about symptom tracking, SHBG interplay, downstream metabolite behavior, and neuroendocrine signaling. These don't just happen in a vacuum. What often gets missed is how powerful data can be when interpreting the clinical context. Not just through the lens of a lab reference range, but real world physiology. That's why precision matters. I've also used enclomiphene in cases of transient gynecomastia. So let me back up for a second. During the first six to eight weeks of TRT, some men experience nipple sensitivity, small mass formation due to temporary elevations of estrogen. If this is caught early, these signs can often be reversed. And I've seen excellent outcomes using enclomiphene to rebalance LH and FSH signaling and support natural testosterone to estrogen ratio. But it's important to stress that this is only effective when caught early. However, gynecomastia lasting longer than a year is typically permanent and requires surgical correction. 
Estrogen gets demonized in men's circles all the time, especially on Reddit. But the goal isn't to crush estrogen, it's to balance it. Too high, you get irritability, water retention, and sometimes nipple sensitivity or gynecomastia. Too low, you get joint pain, fatigue, low libido, and emotional flatness. And in this patient's case, we didn't reach for an aromatase inhibitor. We improved androgen balance, reduced clomid exposure, and supported natural estrogen metabolism using things like DIM, calcium deglutarate, methylated B vitamins, boron. And in some cases, we will use anywhere from like a 0.25 to 1 milligram of anastrozole as needed, not as a daily and not as weekly. Anastrozole is an aromatase inhibitor that blocks aromatizations of testosterone to estrogen. That dropped estradiol from 75 to 44 without tanking it. This is where you see the nuance, and usually most protocols miss this. You don't want to fix hormones with a sledgehammer, right? So you have to be strategic. So you want to look at some of the biggest myths that I hear, and the first one being that Clomid and Enclomiphene are the same. As I stated above, they are not. Clomid is one product with two molecules inside of it, enclomiphene, zooclomiphene. Enclomiphene is the specific one with a shorter half-life. Zooclomiphene is where the longer half-life, and it tends to have more of the negative estrogen side effects. So Clomid is the one that we don't want because it has the two, and Clomiphene is the more of the specific that we really want. Another myth is that Clomid is safer because it's older. That's not true. And Clomiphene has a cleaner mental and physiological profile, then there's the idea that Clomiphene only works for secondary hypogonadism. This is where the research is strong, and I do see this in my clinical practice, but it's also helpful for men recovering from anabolic cycles or cycling off TRT and bridging the gaps in between therapies. And it brings me to my next myth is that more is better. And in higher doses often lead to worse outcomes. And that's with anabolics, testosterone, anything, right? And I see great results with even 6.25 to 12.5 milligrams of enclomiphene. The key is to start slow and titrate slowly and always track symptoms and not just the labs. So the question then becomes is, should you use Clomid or enclomiphene? And it depends on your goals, your labs, and your tolerance. Clomid works, but it's like a blunt instrument. And clomiphene is more targeted, reliable, and generally better tolerated from my clinical experience. If you're trying to preserve fertility, restarting your natural production, or transitioning off a of TRT, and clomiphene is often my go-to. Always test, never guess. Track how you feel, not just what you look like on paper, and work with someone who understands the biochemical nuance. If this video helped, share it. And if you want more deep dives into men's health optimization, peptides, and hormone science, stick around. Till then, take care of yourself, stay smart, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next one.